happy puppy thursday i hope you guys are having a fantastic day my name is desiree if you guys are new welcome to keeping up with the click high and you can please do me a favor and type new in the comments below so that we can welcome you all of you thursday regulars welcome back i hope you guys are having a great day look at what we have in the puppy room so today we decided to show you guys the older puppies because they are getting so so active and they leave in just i don't know catherine five days something like that they leave next tuesday so this is the very last time you guys are going to see them before they go to their new families <laughs> For those of you who want to know, they are a little over seven weeks old and they are crazy active. Um, if you guys are new, you may not know how this works, but we have a live chat going on. We um, answer all of your guys' questions during the whole process of the live stream, but we ask that you please put three question marks before your question so that we can identify what is a question and what is not. Otherwise, it is very, very likely that we will miss that question. Hey, can you move the mic? Sorry, I just noticed the mic is facing the wrong way, so you guys might have a harder time hearing me, and uh, hear the puppies a lot better than us. That's not good. So uh, anyhow, please put three question marks before so we can answer your questions, and we will get to your questions as we can. We are going to dive right in, and then we will take a break and answer some questions. <laughs> They are crazy hyper today. Okay, so what's our topic today? Traveling with our puppy for the first time. Maybe not the first time. Usually it's going to be the first time because once you've done it, you probably don't need to know what to expect and what you should be packing and what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. Um, so this is really designed for new puppy owners that are either flying or driving to pick up their new puppy and what you guys should be doing. But first, oh my gosh, let's see. Can you see the other one? Where is she? Oh, there she is. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are able to listen to me whenever you're watching all these crazy hyper puppies. Um, but anyhow, if you are taking your puppy for a long drive, um, you can stop along the way and let them out to go potty. Um, wait, what is that, Lex? That's what you told me. Hold on, I'm having a difficult time. Hold on. All of my notes are jumbled. Okay, I think I screwed up. All right, we will see. This is what you get whenever we go live. You get what you get. I should have scooted that over a little bit. All right, sorry. I did not have coffee this afternoon. If you were here last week, you guys know I was kind of uh, a wreck. Okay, so it doesn't get... It doesn't get much more exciting um, than bringing home a new puppy for the first time. But for you and your new puppy member, it is a once in a lifetime experience, but you only get one chance to do it correctly. So we don't want to stress our puppy out too much and we don't want to stress ourselves, ourselves out too much. So we want to make sure that we are both prepared for them and for us. We are going to talk about our puppies and traveling by airplane first, and then we will talk about driving on a, um, in a car. And that could be driving in a car whenever it is a long haul across country or when you're just taking a few hours stroll and picking up your puppy. Uh, most people nowadays are driving pretty far or traveling uh, because the dogs they're getting are not necessarily available in the areas that they're in. And so that's why this is an important topic. Um, but we want you guys to be prepared. Okay, before I jump on, Let's see if, hey Lex, are you um, scanning um, these for me and putting the stars? Where is she? 
Oh boy, my daughter just left. What? No, I have it. I have it. Huh? I have it. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, okay. Wow. Um, we're having a problem. My notes got lost, but I think I'm going to be able to wing it. So we'll see. <laughs> Alexis is printing them for me. I usually have them in front of me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> in the meantime, I'm going to look and see what's going on here. <laughs> um, Arlena is saying that she wishes she could make the screen um, bigger without losing the chat. I think that even if you have it big, um, it the chat will show up on the side. It'll just cover, I think it'll cover me. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure it covers me if that's the case. Um, thank you. So you could try that. All right, we're gonna try this one more time. Let's see, oh, I know. Oh wait. Whenever that with that it's playing or whenever it has the arrow it's playing. That means stop. Right now? Yeah, that means play. Oh that's wrong. That's wrong. Yeah. So that's right. Can you can you move that? They're, they're slowly moving it this way, this way, this way. They're going to be out of frame in a second. Alexis is going to go move um, the puppies real fast. All right. So how do you guys prepare um, for your puppy's first travel is going to depend on the distance and the type of travel. So first we're going to talk about traveling. <laughs> Thank you, Alexis. First we're going to talk about traveling with um, planes. Oh, my gosh. I do not want to have to have my notes right here because that's going to be dumb. <laughs> so when traveling, I'm going to keep try to keep going. So when you travel by plane um, with a puppy, there are some things that you must do beforehand. Whoa. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't think we're going to be able to get through this whenever they're so freaking cute. Can you see him? Yeah. <laughs> He's getting your hair. <laughs> All right. Rue's going to go crazy now. Now Rue wants back out. She was just out. Um, so first thing you want to do is communicate with your breeder. Rue, stop. What a crazy day it is. I have to leave you. Yeah, we got to get Rue out because that's all we could hear. Um, we moved Rue, so she's literally right here. She might just want to be loose. I don't know. Because she hears all this going on. But she can't go in there with the puppies. Come here. Yep. What are you doing? Get up here, you brat. What's your deal? Huh? You want to be on the live? Is that your deal? You want to be on the live? Okay, get down. Come on. Go potty. <laughs> All right. Communicate with your breeder um, that you plan to travel by airplane is probably a number one important thing to do because um, the airline requires you to have a health certificate in order for that puppy to get on the airplane. And although myself and I'm, I'm hoping and assuming that all breeders um, get a health checkup whenever they are sending puppies home, they don't ask for a health certificate and those are different. So a health certificate is something that has to be um, signed by a USDA vet and it is required by the airlines. A health, a health checkup 
is just a, an exam. So they kind of coincide with each other because in order to get a health certificate, you have to have a health checkup. But now I have Ruth's hair in my mouth. <laughs> but, but they're totally different forms and you cannot go to the airport with just your health checkup paperwork. They won't accept that. <laughs> the crazy hyper. Um, so that is super important. Make sure you communicate with your breeder that you are traveling by airplane. And then now I have to keep looking down because my um, iPad with my notes just took a crash. Um, so then you want to choose your flight wisely. And what I mean by that is you want to, if possible, get a nonstop flight because you're traveling with a puppy that is in a small carrier that can't get out, can't go potty. And so if you have to have layovers and um, switch planes and, and rush to your second flight, it's just adding more stress on you, which in turn is gonna add more stress on your puppy. So it's not always possible, I know, but if you can, get a nonstop flight. And then um, you want to make sure that you don't book a seat in a emergency exit aisle because they will not allow puppies to travel with you as your carry-on in those rows. So if you are booking your flight and you pick your seat and then you're trying to add the puppies flight, you're going to have to change seats anyway. So don't use um, those seats. You know what else I forgot? I forgot to put their water outside of the... We'll do that in a minute. I just remembered their water is inside their puppy pen. They're going to be thirsty after all of this. Um, okay, so after you do that, you want to see if you can possibly get a seat with extra foot room. So I know a lot of airplanes now allow, that's smart, thank you, but you'll latch it with the bungee on the yeah. ground right there. Um, they'll allow a seat that has extra leg room, but you have to pay extra for it. The reason why I recommend you try that, if at all possible, is because um, you may not know this, but that puppy is going to go in the carry-on um, bag under the seat in front of you. So that means if you have more space, your feet are going to have more space so that once that puppy goes under, you still feel comfortable and you don't feel cramped. Um, Okay, so that's it with choosing your flight wisely. Now, when it comes time to booking your flight, uh, most airlines will allow um, very few dogs on each flight. So you may try to book a flight and you don't have your puppy booked with you, then you go to add the puppy and either they tell you there's no space for that puppy, or they're gonna tell you that the flight that you are on is not pet friendly. And what they mean by that is they can't accept pets on that flight. So it is very important to call the airlines before you book your flight, and if possible, book them together. I know a lot of times airlines will give you guys a better price when you book online. So if that is the case, then you need to call Make sure that the flight that you are wanting is pet friendly and that there is space for your carry-on pet. If there is, then you book your flight online, then you need to call them back and you have to book your puppy's flight or ticket. They don't get their own seat. They have to go in the seat in front of you um, and they have to fit under there. So we'll get into those details here in a minute. Um, and so it's better to try to book it all together uh, at the same time, but again, whatever you got to do, just make sure that that flight allows pets. The other thing to keep in mind when it comes to um, booking the flight is that, um, oh my gosh, I just, just lost my train of thought. I saw something. Uh, oh, what I was going to say is not every airline even allows carry on pets. So if you're traveling and I'm just throwing a name out there, Frontier, I don't know if they do or they don't because I don't use them. But if you're traveling with somebody that is not very well known or doesn't travel, you know, all over the whole United States, make sure that they even allow carry on pets. 
okay? You also need to make sure, there's a lot of things that you guys have to make sure before you can even get your flight booked. You also need to make sure that the airline that you are trying to use accepts pets at eight weeks old. Now, most breeders let their puppies go home at eight weeks. Some, depending on where you're getting your dog and what kind of dog it is, some don't even let them go till they're 10 weeks. Oh my God, he almost, he almost ate it. Um, but there has been a lot of changes and they're constantly still changing their rules and requirements for traveling with pets. And so um, make sure that they allow puppies at eight weeks old if in fact your puppy is 80. I hear her, She's at, Rue's already at the door. Um, so just make sure that they allow whatever age your puppy is, okay? And then um, you're going to, the next thing you're gonna do is now your puppy's flight is booked with you, right? You have communicated that information back to your breeder or whoever it is you're getting your puppy from. And um, now you can purchase your puppy's carry-on bag. So you have to have a very specific type of bag for traveling by airplane with a puppy in the cabin. It has to be airline approved. It has to be soft sided, which means it cannot be a hard plastic crate. It can't be a hard metal crate. It has to be soft sided plastic and it has to have three sides that are ven ventilated and that is where like it's just mesh venting um, so that there's plenty of ventilation for the puppy. Now, some requirements that they, they state uh, with the airlines is that you um, you have to have um, the three sides, but also that the puppy has to be able to stand, turn around, and lay back down without touching the top. Okay, that is just plain ridiculous because I don't even know of any puppy that can do that in these soft carry bags because they are small. I'm telling you, they're pretty small. But they um they usually are lenient they may say oh it doesn't look right and then they're like hey she fits fine usually dogs at least in our breed love the smallest spot that they can get into they climb into it and they can spin around just fine but they like small compact places um but i have never had a situation where i was turned away because of it and i have traveled on airplanes with standard size clique inside the cabin. Um, so we can do it, but it just depends on how comfortable that dog is. So whenever you go, huh? Sorry, I hate to interrupt. They, they made a new hole. <laughs> so I don't know what to do. Okay, put them all play in. Okay. You could take them some bones, the, the little bones right there, the, any of them. Um, for those of you who have been here, we have our patio is separated so that our dogs don't invade us all of the time. Well, they have decided to make a hole in the patio divider and now they can just come and go as they please. So they're all just banging on our sliding glass door right now because that's just how it goes. They know it's Thursday. So she's going to go do that. Okay, so when it comes to picking which type of carry bag, there are tons and tons of bags on the market. But here are some important um, tips that I think um, are valuable <laughs> when you are purchasing one and trying to decide which kind to get. One is going to be that it is obviously durable. Remember, you are going to use this for a young puppy, but you could use this with most Klikai. You could probably use it even when they're in adulthood. Um, so you might get multiple uses out of it. So you might be picking up a puppy now that's four, five, six pounds, but you want it to be able to hold a puppy that's 10, 12 pounds. Um, so make sure it's durable. It's durable for multiple reasons. One, so that it can hold the weight, but two, oh my... I don't think I'll be able to repurpose this video. It's a mess. They're loud. But two is that um, if it's not durable, then what's going to happen is the puppies may claw at the sides, which is the mesh, and they may rip a hole in it. And you definitely don't want your puppy to rip a hole in it or biting and um, chewing a hole in it before you even get to your destination. So spend the extra money because you get what you pay for. 
Um, a few other tips is the, um, the bottom support, which obviously I think I said the support, but just because you're going to be holding it with the handle usually, so it's going to weigh it down. But that bottom support, some of them have the wire on the sides, some of them do not. Um, some of them are very collapsible. And so when you try to put that on your shoulder with a five, six, seven pound, it literally like caves in the center. And then you, that poor puppy is getting like smashed like this. So um, pay attention to that part. And then also you wanna pay attention to um, the openings. So usually the carry bags, I forgot I was gonna get the one out of the garage. We don't use ours very often because I don't have to travel anymore. But the top usually will zip open and then one of the sides will zip open. Not all of them have a big top and not all of them have a side zipper. The top is important that it opens all the way. Like you want that whole top to open. The reason why is because you want the puppy to be able to get in easily. Remember, the puppy's not gonna, at eight, nine, 10 weeks, they're not gonna just say, okay, let's go for an airplane ride. So you're gonna have to put them in. If you have a tiny little spot that's open on the top and you're trying to shove the puppy in, that's not going to be any fun. Um, so make sure that you can open the top all the way. On the side, you want one that opens on the side as well. The reason being is remember that pen, I mean that carrier is going under the front seat, which means the person sitting in front of you is basically on top of your puppy's crate. You are not going to be able to open up the top and check on your puppy or give them a bone or what if they have an accident and you can't just easily access your puppy, you have to pull that whole thing out, which by the way, you're not gonna have space. You, literally, your feet are gonna be down there on the ground and your feet are gonna be touching that puppy's carrier. So for you to pull it out, you are gonna have to move your legs or get out of the seat and into the, the walkway to be able to pull it out. But if you have a side zipper, then you can open the side while the puppy is under that front seat and still access the puppy. So those are some important um, tips when picking a, a carrier for traveling on an airplane. Another good thing, it's not 100% necessary, but it is, is good to have, is one that has a side zipper or side pockets so that you can put their leash in there, so that you could put um, maybe their little plastic water container I would say the collapsible ones are the best um, because you don't have much space um, and so you could shove a few little things into the zipper I don't recommend putting their food or their treats inside the side zipper because remember puppies dogs have amazing sense of smell and that is gonna drive your puppy crazy because they're gonna be constantly digging trying to get at it. So don't put any food or treats in the zipper pockets. But you could put pee pads. I mean, you could put um, poop bags and you could put their little water container and their leash. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. But once you get it all down, hey, you'll be fine, I promise. Um, just get the extra room. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know, but let me get through. Okay, I, next I was gonna talk about um, the things that you need to bring along or send to your breeder ahead of time. So we'll go ahead and answer a few questions before I keep going. Okay, Catherine is asking um, what bag we use for our standard click high. Um, asking for Kelly. I used the the Sharpa bag. Um, in fact, we we have I have two of those bags, um, and so I'll pull those out um, when we when we switch over to the private because then I'll have my five minute break and I'll go grab them for you guys. But I use the Sharpa ones. Um, it's S H E R P P A I think, and you can get them at Petco. Um, there's also a couple other really good ones, but those are the ones I have and I have had for years. Um, they're like mm, 60 to 80 dollars, but I have had them for over 10 years, well over 10 years, no rot, no nothing, and I could still use them. Okay, Tanya, if you are about 13 to 15 hours away, is it better to fly or drive with brakes? Um, you know, it is a personal preference. 13 to 15 hours is a really long drive with a puppy. Personally, 
I would say I much rather take a flight and have to get to the airport a few hours early, but hey, I'm relaxing by the time you get in there. Personally, I say fly, but some people don't like flying. Some people don't like that stress. We will get into car rides and long drives in, um, in a little bit. Um, do you have recommendations on airline approved bags? So yeah, I, the one that I use the most is the Sharpa one. Okay, Megan, on the East Coast, would you recommend a red eye so that the puppy can stay on a sleep schedule? Yes, so um, if you are having to go all the way across country, I would recommend that you either try to get a um, later in the afternoon flight or a red eye because your puppy will sleep a lot better than they will throughout the whole day. But little puppies, if it is an eight week old puppy, they sleep a lot. So if you keep them awake, which we'll get to here in a minute, um, they'll probably be able to sleep on an airplane for like four, three and a half, four hours. Did you give them coffee tonight? <laughs> they had, they had, they took my coffee. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, when you shipped puppies, which carrier did you send them in? So when I had to ship puppies or when I did ship puppies, which we are not doing now, um, they did not go in a soft sided carry on. So those are two totally different, um, restrictions and requirements. So you cannot travel, um, in cargo is what they call it with a soft sided carrier. So totally different hard plastic crates is always mandatory. Okay, and then I know this has nothing to do with that, but I see somebody saying, uh, I received an email about puppy availability, Availability, then returned an email asking for if it would be sent. I tried calling and left a voicemail, but I haven't heard back. Adore all your videos. Yes, thank you. So we, we don't actually have puppy availability, but we do randomly open up our waiting list for very few amount of people. Um, we did that at the beginning of the month. But in that email, it also states that our, literally it fills up within 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and so if you responded after 10, 15 minutes, it was probably already full and I got overwhelmed. And as you can tell, we are busy. So I did not respond. <laughs> we will do it again probably in the month, next month maybe, but you'll just have to be on top of your emails, unfortunately. Okay, there's a few Sharpa bags. Um, if you're getting an eight-week-old puppy, you can stick with the small one, but if you plan to use it um, when the puppy is even older, if you are gonna be traveling with your dog often, I would go with the larger one. So there are two sizes. Um, Lindsay, I'm not positive what those numbers are right now, but I will tell you, I have both sizes, and I've used both of them on the airplane, and you won't have a problem with either one. Um, but, 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 but remember the airlines keep changing the rules. So what they said to me six months ago, or even last month, may be different now when it comes to their regulations and requirements. So you should always look at the airline you're planning to use, what they say on the website and confirm that the right size is there. Um, so that's my suggestion. Oh, that's a good one. You know, honey, if you want to go grab it, you want to go grab it. I have no bag? idea where it is. Okay. What we'll do, that's a great idea. We can do that for you. Um, and if I can, if I can get through this and if you're going to stay on here, um, I'll grab it. They are literally in the garage and I think they're up on the top shelf of the bookcase. But I can go grab it, but my daughter can't run the show because this stuff, my notes are not over there. So I have to finish this and then I will grab them for you. Um, but that is a great idea. If for any reasons I can't, I will put it on Instagram. All right, we good? Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the things that um, you should bring along. Now remember, we're only talking about traveling by plane. So you are flying to your breeder or to whoever it is that you're getting this dog from, and then you're flying home with this pet. And so um, there's a couple things that we recommend that you bring or ship to your breeder if you have that type of relationship. Um, and we'll get into that here in a second. But a lot of these are pretty common sense things. You want a collar or a harness. I prefer a collar, even if you guys are gonna have a harness for your puppy. 
My recommendation is a collar to begin with because remember, you're putting your puppy in a soft carrier that they've never been in before and you're putting this big harness on their body and they're gonna have to lay with it um, and keep it on because you need to be able to access your puppy at any given time. Also, it is a lot easier to hook a leash to a collar that's right here when you open the front zipper and you hook it instead of a harness where the hooks are all over the place. So less is better when it comes to traveling with your puppy. My suggestion is a collar. But again, it is your puppy, it is your life. If you want a harness, bring a harness. Um, and then of course your leash, your poop bags, uh, your water dish. Now, your water dish shouldn't be big and bulky. It cannot connect to this soft carry-on. Um, and so there are collapsible ones. And when I get my soft carrier, you'll see one hooked on there that is very convenient. Um, but you're not gonna be giving your puppy a lot of water, so it doesn't need to be anything big, okay? Um, a blanket or bedding, and preferably from the breeder so that it smells like their home, their litter mates, their mama dog, all of that stuff. A bone. Um, and toys. Now when it comes to bones, something for them to chew on, you want to avoid treats or um, bones that are easily digestible because that is going to cause your puppy to have to go potty. So you're giving them something to help them soothe their mind, right? To take away the, the anxiety or whatever it is, but you don't want them to consume it. Um, the carrier, of course. Now, when it comes to the carrier, my suggestion would be, if at all possible, to ask your breeder if you can ship that carrier to her or him. And the reason why, and one of our puppy owners did this, and I probably should recommend this for everybody, and I didn't think about it, but they sent it to me in advance, and they, it was here for over a week. And so then I was able to open it up, let it smell like our house, let the puppies get used to it, let the siblings all jump in it. I actually put them all in it just for the smell and let them get used to it because you're coming to pick up a puppy. Most likely you're coming here and then you're leaving from our homes and you're going to the airport or within hours you're going to the airport. So now they have a brand new smelling crate, brand new owner, all of these new smells and it's overwhelming. So if you can, send it to them ahead of time. And that way it's gonna smell like the home that they've always been used to. And then the last thing I suggest you bring is um, um, your, or two things, pee pads, okay? Because you want pee pads to layer the inside of your puppy carrier. The reason this is a good idea is yes, the carrier is gonna come with a little soft bed. Your puppy might have an accident. Your puppy might throw up. And now you only had one bed and what are you supposed to do with it? <laughs> so either you're going to try to go into that tiny restroom and clean it. It's not going to happen. You're going to throw it away. Yes. And then what? So if you put pee pads on top of the soft cushiony bed, you can literally roll out the pee pad and throw it away and everything else is still clean. It's a lot easier to throw a pee pad away than it is to throw away a whole bed. Um, so pack that and then food for emergencies only unless you have long layovers, which hopefully you can avoid. Um, so you are taking a little bit of food, but try not to feed your puppy if at all possible. Um, the reason that I say that is usually 10, 15 minutes after your puppy eats, they're going to use the restroom. If you are feeding your puppy in midair in this little soft crate, they're going to go potty. So plan ahead, which we'll get into here in a second on how you can try to avoid feeding them um, during travel. And then um, I still have Rue's hair in my mouth. <laughs> like it's just lingering. With what to bring, I have, um, Catherine had two questions. Okay. This one. Okay. Um, I would recommend it, Catherine, only because even though your flight is supposed to be short, things happen. You might get to the airport and there's an hour delay. Um, you might be sitting on the tarmac for two hours, God forbid. But things happen, right? There's emergency situations. And so you just want to be prepared for the worst case situation. Yeah, a star mark would be a, a good treat to bring um, for this size puppy because 
they really can't consume it. Um, it takes them days, weeks. <laughs> so yes, that would be a good one. And this is off topic. Um, have you ever flown with an adult Alaskan Klikai in cabin? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Standard even. And there's that hair. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's like... I think I got it. Dog breeder problems. It really was like her hair could fill up the course. Okay, we're good? Yes. <laughs> All right, so now after all of that, you're finally ready to travel on the plane with your puppy. <laughs> so you're going to go to your breeder's home, um, or they're going to meet you at the airport, and, and then um, you want to make sure that you have plenty of time to, first of all, let the puppy smell and get used to you, but also to let that puppy use the restroom and get some exercise, especially if you are coming to the breeders and going straight to the airport. And if you communicate well with your breeder, your breeder will know, you know when you land and when you arrive, and hopefully your breeder will make sure that your puppy has been fed in advance, make sure that he's been exercised, but don't assume that all breeders handle things the same way. So communicate all of that so that way you guys can be on the same page. And for our situation with us, if you guys do get a puppy from us, obviously I know all of that information. And by the way, if you are getting a puppy and you have to fly, the health certificate requires the vet to put on there your travel information, which means what airport and what airlines you're on. So your breeder should already know this information. Um, but again, don't assume that they're going to do what they should be doing. But we, if you get a puppy from us, your puppy will be fed well before you pick up your puppy. Your puppy will be exercised well before and pottied. And that way, when you get here, we will literally have five, 10 minutes. Your puppy hopefully will just come running up to you. Use the restroom one more time if they need to. Ask a few questions and you guys will be on your way. <laughs> They're nonstop, aren't they? Okay. so. Get your puppy, let them go potty, let them smell you, let them get accustomed to you. <laughs> Put their collar on them or their harness. Check to make sure the size. So it should be kind of snug, okay? No more than two fingers when you go through here. Snug because a puppy's most likely never had a leash or a harness on, most likely never been um, with a collar. And so all of this is new. You don't want them spooked and getting um, pull and pulling themselves out of their car their collar or their harness um all right and then avoid feeding them so avoid feeding them for several hours <laughs> i know from back there you guys can't tell who's who but the one that's barking and on top of the light one is is kaya the female which if you guys remember the girls are always oh there she is no that was him she's in the she's in the toy box so she's in the toy box, was. Um, so avoid trying to feed the puppy too much. Avoid too much water. Puppies and dogs can go several hours without water. They don't need tons and tons of water. The more water you give, the more they're gonna potty. So keep that in mind. Um, now, if you have a layover, if you have a long flight, then of course you have to do what's best for the puppy even if it's an accident, it is what it is. Just be prepared and make sure you have everything you need in advance. Um, if you have a small puppy, and this is a little side note, for anybody who's picking up a tiny three pound puppy and flying all day or all night or a very long amount of time, those puppies will have hypoglycemic um, events if they are not fed often. And so what is in there that they're all trying to get? Oh. <laughs> Nothing. They're just playing silently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> so... um. <laughs> I don't know if you guys all saw that. Don't rewind it if you didn't. 
Uh, oh, 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 the puppy um, hypoglycemic. So if you have a small puppy, then what you can do if it isn't meal time is you can carry a small uh, little tube of NutraCal. It's called NutraCal, and it's a, a very neutral, uh, neutral. Oh my God, a very calorie dense um, little. Basically, it's like a a gel that you would squeeze sticky. literally. Oh, it's very sticky. It's a very small amount, but it has tons of calories. Um, and it will keep your puppy from going into any type of hypoglycemic situation. So if you have a young puppy, keep that in mind. I mean, a, a small puppy. So really that's like three pounds. Otherwise you'll be fine. You don't need that. Okay. So you're going to get to the airport extra early, um, so that you're not rushed, right? Because you're, you have a lot that's going on whenever you guys get to the airport. You have to check in at the counter. So if you guys travel a lot and you're used to just checking in on your phone or going to the quick kiosk and checking in and off you go to the gate or to TSA, that doesn't happen when you have a puppy. So you have to check in at the ticket counter and they will um, ask you for the health certificate. Okay. Now, if I didn't, one thing I did not say, cause we're talking puppies here, but if for any reasons you guys have a puppy that is older than um, 16 weeks, then you will re will be required. <laughs> you will be required to have a rabies certificate as well. Um, but because we're only talking little puppies, I didn't bring that up. Uh, just keep that in mind. So any of you traveling later on in life, you will have to have, in addition to your health certificate, you have to have rabies. Okay, so after they check out your health certificate, they're gonna have you um, check the puppy and they're gonna have you pay for that puppy's flight that ticket now some situations when you book your flight you can pay for your puppies sometimes they just book your puppy's um, flight but they don't charge you until you get there if you can and again every airline is different and every airline changes their rules constantly but if you can pay for it in advance because the less you have to deal with when you get to the airport, the better, right? You don't want to have to be dealing with a puppy who's in a carrier and a bag and trying to pay for things and show your ID and show a health certificate. So try to get as much as you can done in advance. Um, so some will allow it, some won't, but try. All right. So once you um, are in the clear with the check the, the ticket counter and you are able to get over to your gate, then you're gonna have to go through the security checkpoints. And when you go through security checkpoints, some have one, some have multiple, but um, you will have to take your puppy out of the bag. And so my suggestion is take their collar off, like when you're at the ticket counter, take that off because you have to carry that puppy through the security bar, whatever that's called, the laser thing and the bag has to go through just like a checked bag so they're going to scan it so you want to have everything off of your puppy at that point why are you playing in the water get out of there he's digging in the water mm. the dark red puppy crimson oh my god he's literally just doing this to the water he's hot yeah he's hot because he's now he's gonna be soaking wet, by the way, when he comes back over here. So now you guys will know why. He's doing it again. Guess I should have filled that pool with water. Um, oh my God. I know the screen's blank. Nobody's even on it. They need to get out of there. <laughs> That's what happens because he's soaking wet. <laughs> oh. Great. He's back over there again. He's not, they're not gonna have any water. All right. So oh, the floor is all wet and they're all slipping. Oh my lord. So now what's gonna happen is um, you're gonna get through your checkpoint. Keep in mind before you take your puppy out of your bag. Okay. Take your shoes off. Take your jacket off. Take your belt off. Put all your stuff on the counter. That's gonna have to go through the checkpoint and then take your puppy out and then put the bag in and then you walk through. Then when you get over back, everything's clear, put your puppy in the bag first, then get all your stuff on. Because if you don't do all that first and you have trying to hold a puppy and do it, it's just gonna be a nightmare. So do it in that order and you won't have a problem. 
Um, sometimes they will get the little wand and check if something is going off. Most likely it's you. It shouldn't be the puppy if you took their collar off. Okay, so now you are finally ready to get to your gate. <laughs> So hopefully you are there like three hours in advance um, if you're in a big airport. If you're not, you can probably get away with two hours if there are smaller airports. And now you finally are at the ticket counter and you can relax a little bit. You can try to get that puppy out as much as you can before you get on that um, plane. Most people in the airports don't ever say anything about a puppy being out and you're holding that puppy. Um, so hold the puppy. I don't recommend that you let the puppy down and you walk with the puppy because they're young. They don't even know how to walk on a leash. There's going to be a million people and they're going to get trampled and they're going to be scared. So don't scare them more than they should be scared. Now they're all pooped out and now we have no one in there. <laughs> you need to get them out of that room. They're back over there. They're on the bed playing though. Um, so keep them out. And now make sure that you have given them a, um, a little bit of water. I'm talking a little, like a few licks. Okay. A few licks of water because it's been probably an hour now through this whole process and take them to go potty. Now, almost every airport has an area for dogs relieving themselves. Some are inside, some are outside the airport. Um, but they're still within the TSA regulation regulated area that's already like screened. Do not take your puppy to those places. Okay. Puppies are not fully vaccinated. You don't know what dogs are coming and going and using that area. You don't know how well it is cleaned. And so my recommendation, one of the reasons why I tell you to pack pee pads is you take a pee pad, you go to the restroom, you go into a stall. Oh, that was adorable. Even though you are a bad puppy. He's like, his whole sliding. butt is sliding because he's soaking wet. Um, and you lay the pee pad down on the ground and try to get your puppy to go potty there because a lot of dogs are not going to be in there. And hopefully they will go potty there if they have to go. If not, then they're going to go on their bed, on their pee pad if you have one. No, at the end of the world, clean it up. It is much safer for your puppy to let them potty in that carrier than to take them to those places. So avoid those at all costs. Um, if you um, have a couple hours still that you are waiting before your flight takes off, do your best to keep that puppy awake. The reason I say that is you don't want your puppy napping with you, sleeping in your arms for an hour while you sip on a coffee and then you get on a plane and now you've just taken an hour of time that they were napping and they're going to be awake. So keep them awake. It's just like toddlers and kids where we like, okay, we're going to sleep in the car. You're going to sleep on the plane, keep you up, keep you up. Um, so do the same thing with your puppy. Keep them up as long as you can. Tire them out. Give them a tiny, tiny bit of water. Give them a potty break. And then 10, 15 minutes before you guys get um, ready to board, put him in his carrier. Time to go. What are you laughing at this? <laughs> they just keep walking back and forth. It's like, <laughs> look at what. No, no, we're, we're live. I'm not watching that right now. <laughs> She's rewinding so I can see. <sighs> <laughs> okay, you're distracting me. Okay, so now if you guys have a layover, you're on the plane, you're going to go put your puppy in underneath. Um, if you have a layover, then you are going to get your puppy out during that layover, give them a tiny bit of water, get them as much exercise as you can, and to the restroom again, into a real restroom with the stall and a pee pad. So, <laughs> this adorable. is my spot. What does he have? His foot. Oh, because it's all soaking wet? No, he has a bone. Oh, he has a bone. He has a bone. Look at Kaya hanging over the bowl. That was funny. It is so hard doing lives with them in there. <laughs> so again, if you have a layover, that's what you're going to do. Repeat everything as much as you can. Keep them awake. Don't feed them unless you have a very long day. Okay. Um, and then you're going to feed them as soon as you can and try to exercise them. So they go potty ahead of time. 
and then you are going to land and voila you're done you guys made it your puppy will cry possibly when you get inside the plane they will make a little bit of noise but here's my suggestion and my tip for you guys do not take that puppy out of the carrier once you get on that plane unless you absolutely have to because they've made an, a big accident in there the reason i say that is remember welcome to being a member i don't know how to say that name fabricless fabricus let us know your real name please thank you um so you don't want to oh my god you distracted me what was i talking about they're going to cry. Oh, they're going to cry. The they're reason, thank you. The reason why you don't want to take them out is remember, your puppy is training you right now. They cry, you respond, they never stop crying. And it will start the minute you bring them home, the minute you pick them up. So you can't give in and, and just pull them out because of that, but also because the stewardess, the, the crew, they are not going to allow that puppy to be out full time. Now, once in a while, we get a lucky person who, especially if you go first class, they'll let you take the puppy out. But the problem with that is, is if you take the puppy out and then they tell you to put the puppy back in now, now you've already soothed that puppy and made it happy, gave it its way, and now you're forcing it back into the carrier and you're starting over again. But now they've learned that if they cry, you're gonna respond. So now they cry even more the next time. So if you can, avoid it, avoid it. Okay. I think that's good on my notes. I'm just reading through real fast. Um, yeah, that's it. Now you guys should be there. Fabrici. Fabrici. Oh, welcome. Thank you for pronouncing it for us. Um, so that is it for traveling on an airplane with a puppy. I know it is a lot. We're gonna get to cars here in a minute, but I know I have a few questions um, that I'm gonna answer real fast, and then we're gonna talk about traveling by car. <laughs> I may have missed it, but since the flu over dogs, since you, oh, since you flew over dogs, um, do you charge more to fly dogs? Um, I personally don't fly with puppies and deliver them. Um, I've only done that one time and that was because I happened to be going to that place. <laughs> um, but I don't do that. So it's not something that I do. I will say there are, um, travel nannies, uh, dog nannies that will travel and take puppies to their owners. I'm very leery of that. I've never used one. Um, I don't know how I feel about giving a stranger one of our puppies. Um, unless it is somebody you guys sent, I don't necessarily feel comfortable with that, but I'm sure some of them are licensed, bonded, all of that stuff, but pretty devastating if, if something were to happen and that puppy disappear. So I have never done it, but as far as shipping puppies, if and when we ever ship outside of with the owners again, um, there is a fee for that. It's, we don't make any money on it. It's just what the airline charges and all of that stuff. Um, with regards to the flight and your ticket for the puppy, there is a charge, just so you know. The airlines charge anywhere from like $95 to $150. Every airline is different, prices keep changing, so you will have to do your research um, at that time and, and you will pay that amount. And then do you uh, prefer flying or driving? It depends on where you're coming from um because the distance makes a big difference hey be nice um the distance makes a big difference on which i would recommend so if you are driving 15 hours i say fly uh, i mean if you're driving six hours seven even eight yeah you can make it work um, but if it's any more than that, I recommend flying if at all possible. It's just easier on everybody. And um, there's less risk whenever you do that. We're good? Mm -hmm. All right. 
Oh my gosh. I took a lot of notes. All right. So now we're going to talk about traveling in cars. So, um, when you're traveling in a car, there's obviously a few scenarios because you can be traveling in a car and it's a couple hours or even 30 minutes if you're very fortunate. Um, and then there are people who are tri trying to travel hours and hours or maybe even days and crossing state lines. And so there's different situations. The quick and easy one, real fast traveling to pick up your puppy in a couple hours, I would say four hours or less. Very simple. You don't have to pack a whole lot. Um, you just need to pack a crate. You need to pack a leash and a collar or a harness. Um, the poop bags, right? And pee pads, um, normal stuff, water, chew bone again, emergency situation. You want some food, but you don't necessarily have to if you're 30 minutes away or you're dur during the day and you can stop at a pet co and grab something. So every situation is different. If it's an hour away and you're eight in the morning, you're going to be fine. But if you're traveling at night, your car breaks down, you want to be prepared. So just think of each situation. Thank you, Catherine. Um, <laughs> she's nervous now. Hey. That's not it. I know. It <laughs> I'm so excited when we see that. Thank you, Catherine. Oh, we got another one, Paul. Hey, did that show up the other no. one? It's That's being so picky. weird. It picks and chooses. If you guys are new, that this little thing that pops up is new. Alexis set that up, and we we're so excited. But it works when it wants to work, which is really frustrating. But we still like it either way. Okay, so if you are traveling oh. um, by car, either way, my suggestion would be that you bring somebody if you can, because two is better than one. Um, the reason for that is if you are driving um, for any distance and you're getting a new puppy, a lot of the things are the same whenever you're preparing and you come to the, pick up the puppy, all of that. But once you get in the car and you are leaving, if you have to instantly put a puppy in a crate by itself when it's just left its home, just left its family, just left every smell and scent that it knows, everything that's comforting to him, and now he has to go in a crate, um, that could be a little traumatic. And I personally, I know there's laws, I know there's people who are against it, I don't care. I tell you, bring somebody, put that puppy in their arms because you don't want that puppy to be traumatized right off the bat. And you want them to bond with you. You want them to feel comfortable with you. You want them to smell your scent. So if you can bring somebody with you, I highly recommend you do, and allow that person to hold the puppy or take turns holding the puppy. If it's a short drive, fine, one person hold that puppy. If it is a long drive, and I'm kind of getting off topic real quick because this is important. If it is a long drive and you have more than one person, Make sure that you guys both take turns holding the puppy. <laughs> Everyone's asleep. They're all gone now. We have one puppy in there. <laughs> um, because you do not want that puppy to bond with just one person. River is my, I am his person. I am his only person. Mm -hmm. River came to us and um, when we picked him up at the airport, I held him the entire time and he is my magnet. So we don't want that. I know I tell you guys to do things and then I don't do them, but I know from experience. I love this. One of the reasons I'm flying in because I didn't want Kaya to bond with my friend while I was driving and I don't trust my friend driving my new car. <laughs> and then Sean replies, <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna do just fine. You got this. If I can do it, you definitely can. Yes, it, you'll be fine. I promise you, we'll be fine. This is what we're gonna do. We are gonna give her the ball pit <laughs> for an hour before you guys leave to get on that plane. And then look, she'll sleep like a little baby. <laughs> Maybe you could take a ball pit with you to the airport and put it in the middle and let everybody have some fun. Is there a collapsible ball pit? I know, right? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to take it on a plane. You'd have to put it in a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, off topic. So now, um, 
same things that are gonna apply, right? You're gonna make sure the puppies exercise, make sure they smell you, make sure all of that good stuff. If if they, wow, it is already seven o'clock. Holy yeah. smokes. Okay, I gotta, I gotta speed this up. If, um, if you are traveling long distance, okay? So we're talking, you're gonna have to stop in rest stops. You're gonna have to stop maybe even overnight. You um, have a long drive. A puppy probably can be just fine for three, four hours in a car. Anything more than that, you really have to stop. The puppy is going to get anxious. The puppy needs to exercise. The puppy needs to potty. The puppy needs to eat and drink some water. Um, there's just not any way of getting around that unless you have a huge van and you put in pee pads or you bring a litter box and you let them just tear that place apart, which I don't know if that's the best option. So you have to find somewhere to stop for your puppy. I don't recommend that you take your puppy potty at the local rest stops on the side of the freeway. Um, it's dangerous. Your puppy has never been on a freeway or a highway, right? They've never been at a rest stop. So everything is going to make them nervous. Even different sounds is going to make them nervous and spook them. And the last thing you want is that puppy to break free out of your hand and run across the freeway or run into the hills and just, it's just an accident waiting to happen. So if at all possible, find a place that is not normally a stopping grounds for families with their pets. And so that means um, whatever you have to do to find a place, and I don't know what that place is because I don't know which way you're going. I don't know what, you know, every, everywhere is different. But just if you have to stop at a rest stop or if you have to stop at the gas station and let your puppy go potty, do what you would do in an airport. Go inside the restroom, if they let you, put a pee pad down, sneak that puppy in the bag, they aren't gonna know, and let them go potty there. Um, because you're better off not risking bringing something home. And that is why when I talk about, is it better to fly or drive? If you have a long 15, 16 hour drive and you have to stop 12 times, you have 12 chances now of that puppy either escaping or um, picking up something and bringing that home with you. And puppies are very susceptible to diseases that are out there when they're very young. So the less that um, they can be exposed to, the better it is going to be for everybody. So if you can't find a place, my suggestion would be to put a pee pad on the floorboard, put a pee pad in the back seats, in the trunk, in the trunk whatever you have to do to let them go potty um, and try your best to travel at nighttime. So if you can drive at night, then your puppy is going to sleep a lot more than they will during the day. So a lot of that depends on where you guys are going. Okay. So, um, Okay, I gotta find my, I'm on to the right, I gotta get the right pages. Mm -hmm. Okay, so avoid a full belly whenever you're driving or flying, obviously. Um, so you want them to eat a few hours before. When you meet with your breeder, you want to make sure that um, you either have your phone with your notes out or you bring a notepad or hopefully you already have everything you need to know about that puppy ahead of time. So that way you're not sitting there trying to remember things because I'll tell you, you need to know when they got their shots. You need to know when the next one is due. You need to know what food they're on. You need to know their, their feeding schedule. All of those things you should know in advance so that you're not sitting there trying to remember this stuff. But if you don't, then make sure that you um, get that in writing or take notes and have that so that you know what you need to do. Um, all right, we already said two is better than one. A little play time. So make sure that they get as much exercise as they can. Keep them up. Ask your breeder to do that. It's, a lot of this is gonna be the same whenever you're preparing for a flying or driving. Um, keep them up as much as you can beforehand. And so if you're picking up your puppy, um, and staying in a hotel and either flying or driving the next day, then do your best to allow them to stay up as much as possible beforehand. Um, if you are staying in a hotel, then you have a benefit because your puppy's gonna get used to you already and you can control 
you know, what time you leave, how long you keep your puppy awake, all of that stuff. But not everybody has that ability. Some people are literally picking up their puppy and leaving or driving here and driving right back. So um, keep those in mind. Um, now, I know we get this question a lot and um, the answer is keep your pets at home. So if you already have pets and you want to introduce your pet to your puppy during the pickup, my suggestion is to think again. You don't want to overwhelm your puppy. I know it sounds like a great idea, like it's a bonding time and it's a family vacation and um, it'll be great and it'll keep your puppy occupied, but if your puppy is not used to bigger dogs or whatever it, the situation is, they are going to get overwhelmed. Um, it could stress them out even more. Your current dog could get jealous because you are giving so much love and attention to this new puppy. Uh, your puppy could start bonding with that dog and not really care for you. There's just a lot of bad that can go with it. But the most important is you want that time to really bond with that puppy without any distractions, without anybody else interfering. Um, and so take that opportunity to take advantage of that time before you get home and introduce your current dogs. Additionally, most breeders like myself do not want people bringing their other companions to our home. Um, even though we hope and we trust that you guys are uh, current on vaccines and that your dog haven't been to other places, we take a huge risk whenever we allow people to bring other animals to our home, especially as a breeder. Like we have puppies and it's just not um, the best opportunity, or it's not the best situation for us as a breeder. So keep your other dogs home. Um, so after a little playtime, all of that, your puppy should settle in. Hold them as much as you can. Now, when you bring uh, a friend or a family member with you to bring pick up your puppy, you still should bring a crate. If you have a six hour drive, five hour drive, you're probably gonna have to stop for gas. You're probably gonna get hungry. You're probably both gonna have to go potty. If you have a crate, your puppy can go in the crate and you guys can eat your food on the road without that puppy all up in your face. So a lot of times we think, well, I have two people, we don't need a crate. Bring your crate. It is still a good opportunity to start introducing the crate. Even if it's for 20, 30 minutes, bring the crate. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Make sure you guys rotate, both of you guys. Um, I don't know, am I forgetting anything? Two questions. Okay, I think that might be it. Yeah, I think so. I don't know if I forgot anything. If I did, I'll, it'll come to me in a minute. Okay, Emily, have you heard of pups needing vaccine because of COVID in the future? I asked because a friend who's fostered rescue puppies, they all turned out having COVID. What? Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, that is, I wonder how they knew that dogs had COVID and not something else. No, I have not heard of that. I haven't heard of, in fact, I have a vet appointment tomorrow with these puppies and I'll see what my vet says, but I mean, they would have told me, but as far as I know, no. And I don't know that it's that common um, unless that whole household had COVID and they're raising puppies, but I have not heard of any vaccine for them. Okay. What should I do if a puppy accidentally uh, touches a few things at the rest stop? I mean, they probably will if you can bring um, some type of pee pads and put those down. But if they are, I forgot I'm in this chair, not my wife. I know. Um, you can always just use baby wipes and wipe things down. Um, just, it's not gonna be a super big deal if they just barely go in a few places. Just, just be cautious. Wipe their feet. That's it. There's not a whole lot you can do. Just avoid as much as you can. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? That was long-winded. 
I think I had eight pages of notes. You had a lot of notes. I had a lot of notes. Um, yeah. Apparently, I didn't hear any COVID, but I think... Oh, okay. Oh, so... Okay, so... Corona. Corona. Oh, coronavirus. COVID and coronavirus is not the same. Is that what she said? Coronavirus? No, she said COVID, but it's... Oh, it could it's have a been different. Corona. It's different than the human one. Oh, so could that's have been... why it would have been, I think, Corona. Hmm. There yeah, is a Emily, dog Corona. There is a dog coronavirus, um, and so it would. Whenever you see C O V I D, you would think it's very similar. So it could possibly be that that's what it was. What I am gonna do though is um, let Alexis sit here for a minute. I'm gonna go grab those carriers. No. She's, she doesn't she doesn't want to sit here. I'm going to switch it over. I'm going to go grab those carriers just in case you guys are on. And then we're going to end this. And I'm going to go to um, our private live. So I, I see there's a few questions coming through. So that's good. Ask those questions. I'm going to grab your carriers real fast for you guys. We'll flip it. We tricked you guys. Sorry. Ready? Let me switch the camera view. All right. So first, let me show you my little. Now this was from Trupanion, but they sell. I know they sell all of these, um, even at like Petco, PetSmart, Amazon. So do you see how cool this is? So I put this little hook on it, um, but it comes with the little hole, and it collapses and. They sell these everywhere. So you can just hook this on your little um, carry bag, or even if you guys have a pouch or a backpack that you're bringing, you could clip it on there. So that way you guys have access to a bowl right there. And my favorite, which is old, I'm telling you guys, old, old, old. Okay, so this is the top zipper, which right now the little soft thing is, is out of here and it collapses and folds and this is how I store it in my garage. So do you see how dusty it is? Very dusty. But this is the brand. It's near it. Oh. It's backwards. Oh, well, this is, it's fine, right? They, it's safe, fine. It's backwards. Um, so that is the brand. This is the smaller one. There's one that's bigger. And it has a zipper on the top. Do you see how the whole thing opens? Okay. And it zips from the side here for a pocket, okay? And then it zips here. And this opens. So if you are inside the um, airplane, so very convenient. So a puppy can go both ways. And it has this hard plastic bottom, which is very durable. And this is well over 10 years, probably closer to 15. This one is 
okay because it um, it has the ventilation but what I don't like about this I have this more for traveling with little puppies to the air or um, to the vets for do claws for checkups that kind of thing um, it's really a cat carrier but it's cute and this top is pretty hard so this is good and bad because remember you have to shove this under the seat in front of you if you have to push this down it's going to be hard to push because it's really strong and durable the other thing that i'd say you won't want this for if you're on an airplane is there's no top compartment to zip you can only access from the two sides now it does have two you can get it from either side but it doesn't even have pockets so do you see there's no pockets um it is pretty durable on the top and the bottom but there is no pockets where you going the whole the whole side oh oh alexis oh i never knew it did that <laughs> do you know how hard that would be yeah okay that's even worse i'll be honest try putting a puppy in there and then trying to zip it closed when it's trying to run out I guarantee you that ain't happening. I never knew it even did that because I don't use it that way. <laughs> so that is what I would say eh, stay away from. And that other brand is the kind I recommend or something similar to that. Yeah, because it has the double zipper. Oh, so yeah. it just does this. It goes all the way. Yeah. Uh, again, I use it, but not to travel with um, an animal at the airport at all. Okay, did we have more questions or we can yeah. move on? All right, a few more questions and then we will say goodbye. Because, oh my gosh, look at the puppies. She's going to zoom in. Is that adorable? Oh my goodness. That is so cute. Okay. All right. Um, we are going to answer a few questions. <laughs> it looks fake. Zoom back out because it's kind of blurry. Um, you previously recommend putting a new puppy on your nightstand. Can the carrier, the travel carrier, be used to this? Mm. I would say it depends on the puppy, but most likely not because they do have nails. They are going to claw at the mesh part and that mesh part will eventually give way. Um, they'll also bite at it. So they'll bite at make holes. A friend says her puppy gets car sick. Any suggestions? Also, is that rare or uh, pretty common? Um, so yes, puppies and do adult dogs actually can get car sick or motion sickness. Um, there's not a whole lot I can say you can give your puppy um, because they're really young. If they're older, your vet might be able to give something that's like anti-nausea, anti-vomiting um, meds. But honestly, Diamond had it. Um, she has outgrown it. Um, it's not super common in our breed, but it does it does show up for sure. Um, as far as, um, I think that was it, right? What to give. There's really not a whole lot. The more you do it, maybe they'll outgrow it. Um, They'll drool if they get car sick and they'll just lay, lay there. So it'll make for a lot mm. easier uh, <laughs> travel because they won't be all rambunctious. But I don't know how, how fun it will be for the poor puppy. So I love how they aren't even in a dog bed. <laughs> yeah, they have dog beds everywhere. And nope, they're inside the toy box. Um did you end up liking the carrier oh i loved it i loved it natasha but it's pricey um and there was a waiting list to even get them but i love them she, she natasha showed us one and they are really really nice um the private live is going to be um here on YouTube. However, we're going to end this. We have a five minute um, intermission to use the restroom and then we will switch over to the private. So privates, you're going to go back onto our YouTube channel for those of you who don't know, 
and you're going to go to the community tab. So all of the community um, posts, there's ones that are specific just for private members. There's a link already there and you can go click on that and then that's where we'll be live at. So this will end and you'll go over there. All right, last question and then we're going to end it. Uh, do puppies ever bark a lot during car rides? If so, is there a way for them to bark less? Oh, yes. You know what the solution is? We put our earbuds on, we turn our music up, and we let it, we just sing with them. They do, especially when we're going to the vets and there's three or four of them in there and they're hyper. For me, what I love to do is tire them out before and then give them a bully stick or give them a star mark, give them something to try to keep them busy um, as much as you can. But yeah, they cry, definitely. This is my bad, I missed Lindsay's. Oh, okay. Um, you may have missed, I may have missed it earlier. By traveling from home to the airport, where do you recommend placing your pup in the carrier back seat or on the floor, etc.? Um, so if you're by yourself and you're traveling from, you probably would be, um, then you can, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you put them on the front seat with you, um, it might be better because they can see you, but it might make it worse. Every dog and puppy is different, so every situation is different. For me, I always put them in the back seat um, because... I just like it back there and I don't have to have them in my ear and face. For you guys, you're gonna have a brand new puppy. They aren't gonna know you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's we better. Put them in the back. We put them in the back. But if they can see you and feel a little more comforted, then that's probably better. Um, one thing, oh, one thing I would say is if you guys are traveling by car, um, I know a lot of dog owners have the car seats, the car harnesses. Um, that they could put in the front seat or even the back seat and hook their puppy to it. Now, that is ideal and great for older dogs. However, it's really not age appropriate and not in the best interest of your puppy to try to put them in a, um, a puppy car seat at that age. So if you're picking up a puppy, don't get one of those and think, oh, this is great, your puppy's just gonna be in there. That's not gonna work well. They're gonna really try to get out and they could hurt themselves trying to um, pull out. So don't use that. All right. Whew, that was a long one. I haven't talked that much in a long time. It's a good thing I didn't have coffee. Um, you're welcome, Andrew. Uh, I'm glad that you learned so much. I hope all of you guys learned something and that I didn't ramble on too much. It was a lot of information. I know um, I will take this information and chop it up one into car travel and one into plane travel and make them their own videos for you guys here in the next few weeks. And then um, that way you guys will have something to go back to and not have to watch the whole live. But for those of you guys that are on here, I appreciate you guys um, being on here and supporting us every single week. If you haven't already done so, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button um, and give us a thumbs up. I see we, we had a thumbs down within 10 minutes, which we all know who that is. <laughs> It's all right. Court's coming. Court's coming, buddy. So we are going to call it a night. We're going to give us five minutes because it's already 723. Actually, we'll start at 730. We're going to start at 730 on the private live stream. And um, yeah, maybe the puppies will wake up. I don't know. But thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope you learned something and have a wonderful day. Bye.